Hello and welcome to Byju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the daily quiz discussion for the 17th of July 2022. Beginning with the first question of the day, which reads, which of the following can be considered advantages of millet crop cultivation over the cultivation of food grains such as rice and wheat? The four statements given here are, lesser water requirement, can grow in less fertile soils as well, resistance to climatic stress and shorter growing cycles. Please have a look at the options given. What is the context? This article from the PIB notes the ceremony of the 94th Foundation Day of the Indian Council of Agricultural Research. Speaking at the event, the Union Minister for Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Daring, Sri Parshottam Rupala, noted some of the main initiatives of the Union Government in the field of Indian agriculture. One of the most notable among these was the Indian Government's push to celebrate the year 2023 as the International Year of Millets. Coming back to the question. First, let us understand what are millets. Millets are a group of small seeded grasses. They are widely grown across the world as cereal crop or grains for fodder. Millets are important crops in the semi-arid tropics of Asia and Africa. Millets are chiefly grown in the countries of India, Mali, Nigeria and Niger. The most widely grown millets include sorghum, pearl millets, finger millet, proso millet and foxtail millet. Now what are the advantages of millet crop cultivation over cultivation of food grains such as rice and wheat? The first statement is correct that is millets require lesser water. As per the report of the Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics, that is ICRISAT, one rice plant requires nearly 2.5 times the amount of water required by a single millet plant of most varieties. Hence, the statement that the millet crops require lesser water requirement is correct. Consider the second statement. This is also correct. That is, millets are hardy crops and they can grow well even under marginal conditions of soil fertility. Unlike rice and wheat that require many inputs in terms of fertilizer, millets can grow well even under less fertile conditions. One of the biggest advantages of millet crop is that they are known to be a climate resilient crop. Why is this so? Because millets can grow well even in dry zones as rain fed crops. They are tolerant to very high temperatures as well as very low soil humidity. Hence they can be considered resistant to climatic stress. The fourth statement is also correct. That is, millets have shorter growing cycles as compared to that of rice and wheat in most cases. Some of these millets can be harvested within 60 days as against around 100 days for wheat and rice. Given these advantages, millets are being termed as the crop of the future. Why? Because of their potential to address climate change and food security. Hence, the answer to this question would be option D, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Moving on to the second question, which reads, which of the following statements is or are correct? The first statement reads, if the president dies or resigns or is otherwise incapacitated and as a result, the presidential office becomes vacant, the vice president will act as president for a maximum period of one year. The second statement reads, if the vice president is not available, to discharge the duties of the president. In such a scenario, the responsibilities of the presidential office fall on the Chief Justice of India. The third statement. S. Radhakrishnan is the only person to have served as vice president and then later as president of India. Please have a look at the options given below. What is the context? The National Democratic Alliance has recently announced its candidate for the upcoming vice presidential election. In this context, this article from the Indian Express takes a look at the post of the Vice President in India, the provisions and the previous developments with respect to the office. Consider the first statement. Note, according to Article 65 of the Indian Constitution, the Vice President of India will have to discharge the duties if the office of the President falls vacant due to any reason other than the expiry of the term. Note, the vice president reverts back to his or her office when a new president is elected and enters office. However, a notable provision of this is that the vice president can act as a president only for a maximum period of six months. Hence, the first statement is wrong. 
consider the second statement this statement is correct because if the vice president is not available to discharge the duties of the president the chief justice of india acts as the president of india this was observed in the year 1969 when the then president of india zakir hussain died suddenly the then vice president of india mr v v giri became the acting president however later mr v v giri resigned from both offices as acting president and vice president to become a candidate in the 1969 presidential election in such a scenario the then chief justice of india hidayatullah served as the president of india the third statement is wrong why because there have been six people who have served as the vice president and then later as the president of india and not just one as given in the statement so who are these six people the first one was radha krishnan who was the first vice president and was elected as the president in the year 1962 others include zakir hussain v v giri r venkata raman shankar dayal sharma and k r narayanan since the question asks for the correct statement the answer to this question would be option b two only moving on to the third question of the day which reads which of the following can be considered applications of quantum computing the five points given here are artificial intelligence and machine learning computational chemistry drug design and development cyber security and cryptography and weather forecasting please have a look at the options given what is the context this article from the hindu takes note of the concern that future quantum computers might be able to break the cryptographic crease that protect everything presently in this regard the national institutes of standards and technology based in united states has endorsed cryptographic technologies that are thought to be resistant to attack from quantum computers and one notable technology includes the crystal skyber coming back to the question now let us understand what we mean by quantum computing quantum computing is a type of computation that harnesses the collective properties of quantum states such as superposition interference and entanglement to perform calculations note quantum computers given their high speed of computation are suited to solving complex problems which could be hard for classical computers to solve a notable development in the field of quantum computing was when google made headlines proclaiming the achievement of quantum supremacy now what do we mean by quantum supremacy it's where quantum computers can perform a task that a conventional computer cannot now let's look at what are the applications of quantum computing all the statements given here are correct let's understand how quantum computing finds applications in this field quantum computing can find widespread application in voice image and handwriting recognition under artificial intelligence and machine learning the quantum computing can help in processing complex problems in very less times which would have taken traditional computers thousands of years when it comes to computational chemistry quantum computing has immense power to successfully map the molecules when it comes to drug design and development drugs are usually developed via the trial and error method which is not only very expensive but also risky and challenging task in this regard quantum computing can be an effective way of understanding the drugs and its reactions on humans which in turn can save a lot of money and time for drug companies when it comes to cyber security and cryptography quantum computing with the help of machine learning can help in developing techniques to combat cyber security threats Additionally quantum computing can help in creating encryption methods known as quantum cryptography given a quantum computer's ability to crunch vast amounts of data in a short period quantum computing can lead to enhancing weather system modeling or forecasting the answer to this question would be option c 1 2 3 4 and 5 moving on to the fourth question which reads consider the following architectural features trabiate style use of mortar use of calligraphy petra dura technique and arabesque method which of the above are features of the indo islamic architecture please have a look at the options given below what is the context this article from today's the indian express takes note of the development of the indo islamic architectural style 
during the first 50 years of the Sultanate rule in India. Under this Indo-Islamic architecture type, a fusion between the existing Indian and the new Islamic features created a unique blend. Coming back to the question. The first architectural feature is not a feature of the Indo-Islamic architecture. Note, Trebiet architectural style was characterized by the use of lintels. This was observed in the construction of temples. While what was observed in the Indo-Islamic architecture was the arcuate style. This was characterized by the use of arches and domes. Apart from arches and domes, minars were also present. Given the predominance of arches and domes in Indo-Islamic architecture, mortar was an important construction material. As against stone, which was the primary component of all constructions before the advent of the Indo-Islamic architectural style, this style, that is the Indo-Islamic architecture, used bricks, lime plaster and mortar. The second statement is correct. Calligraphy, Pietra Dura and Arabesque were all notable features of Indo-Islamic architecture. Calligraphy was used as a means of decoration. What do you mean by Pietra Dura technique? It involved the inlay of precious stones and gems into the stone walls. Whereas Arabesque method was used for decoration. It meant the use of geometrical vegetal ornamentation which was used as a decorative element. Hence, the correct answer to this question would be option D, 2, 3, 4 and 5 only. Moving on to the last question of the day. This is a question from the UPSC 2019 Prelims General Studies Paper 1. The question reads, consider the following statements. Asiatic lion is naturally found in India only. The second statement, double humped camel is naturally found in India only. And the third statement, one horned rhinoceros is naturally found in India only. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? Please have a look at the options given. The first statement is correct. Asiatic lion is naturally found in India only. Note, Asiatic lions are slightly smaller than African lions. At present, Asiatic lions are naturally found in India in Gir National Park and Wildlife Sanctuary. Note, the double humped camel is not naturally found in India and it is found in the cold desert areas across Mongolia, China, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and parts of Afghanistan. The third statement is also wrong. Why? Because the one horned rhinoceros is naturally found not just in India but it is also found in Nepal. Since the word only is there, this becomes wrong. Hence, the correct answer to this question would be option A, one only. Moving on to the fact of the day, tele-law service. What is the context? This article from the PIB notes the speech of the Minister of Law and Justice at the 18th All India Legal Services Meet held in Jaipur. Speaking at the event, the Minister announced that from this year, tele-law service would be made free of cost for citizens in the country. Also, additionally, during the event, Department of Justice that comes under the Ministry of Law and Justice and the National Legal Services Authority or the NALSA exchanged a Memorandum of Understanding on Integrated Delivery of Legal Services. As per the provisions of this MOU, NALSA would provide the services of 700 lawyers in each district exclusively for the tele-law program. In this context, let us understand a few basic aspects related to tele-law service. Note, this was launched in the year 2017. The tele-law service of the Department of Justice is an e-interface and pre-litigation mechanism. The service aims to connect needy and marginalized persons in need of legal advice through the paralegal volunteers with the panel lawyers. So the envisaged structure is like this. Common people, paralegal volunteers and finally panel lawyers. As stated earlier, the paralegal volunteers have been stationed to act as intermediaries, bridging the gap between the common people and the tele-law service. They are also expected to play an important role in creating public awareness about tele-law. Whereas, the panel lawyers have been positioned to provide legal advice and consultation to people. A notable aspect of the tele-law service is the use of 
video conferencing or telephonic facilities available at common service centers situated at the panchayat level. Also note, for easy and direct access to telelaw, a mobile application has been launched in 2021 and it is presently available in 22 scheduled languages. What is the significance of this telelaw service? Note, telelaw has widened the outreach of legal services to around 20 lakh plus beneficiaries in just 5 years. Hence, telelaw service has increased the access to justice which has been recognized as an integral part of our legal framework prescribed under the Constitution of India. This is in line with the Article 39A of the Constitution of India, which calls on the state to provide free legal aid by suitable legislation or schemes or in any other way to ensure that the opportunities for securing justice are not denied to any citizen by reason of economic or other disability. That is all for today's discussion. Thank you for being with us.